Hello everyone, welcome to the next part of the Black Widow Mods videos. Today I received basically three boxes on the same day. This is what I'm going to use inside the control box just so the USB cable isn't touching the fan blades anymore. This is just electronic screwdriver which I'll get to in a later video. I'm going to make a separate video about this. But this is what we've been waiting for. And here is the Precision Pizos Orion kit. So let me quickly get this out of the box. So here is the mounting system. So basically, this is going to go in there, and this is going to mount right below the extruder. Here are some basically some screws and the PTFE tubing included. it. And here is the sensor itself. As you can see, there are some uh, piezo transducer discs in here, and this is basically how it detects. And yeah, we'll see how well this works, but hopefully it will be better than the BL Touch, which doesn't work at all. So yeah, it should be better than that. So I'm going to assemble this now. I'm not going to do, do a time lapse, mainly because I don't trust myself not to fuck up something while working on this. So. I'm going to install this and then we'll get to testing it. I am now done with the assembly of the piezo sensor. As you can see, I've mounted it right below where the extruder's gears mount. I don't have the rest of it in the camera right now, but yeah, it just attaches on top of here. So yeah, this, as you can see, made it quite tall, but I don't really care too much about the build space that I have, so it's fine. Here is where the wires to the sensor attach using these DuPont pins and yeah this is the orientation that I chose so that the cable is at the back it makes it less convenient for maintenance but I think it will look overall better and this is how it's going to look from the front and you might have noticed that I don't have this anymore unfortunately as I expected because of the added height of this this no longer fits and yeah, I I found, have the stock E3D fan, and that's what I'm going to use for the hot end itself. And I need to figure out a different layer fan design, which I'll get to in a later video. But my priority right now is to just get this thing working, test the sensor. I need to do some things with the firmware to make sure it's working. But yeah, I'm going to do that. Then we'll test it. I also need to do some wiring again. But anyway, I'm not. Go I'm going to do that off camera. And yeah, after we test it, hopefully it's working, and then we'll finally do some test prints after the duet Wi-Fi upgrade, which, yeah, it took long enough. I want to get this thing working as much as you do, so, yeah, hopefully we'll get to that. I was working on assembling the extruder back, but unfortunately, somehow, I managed to lose a bearing, so here was a bearing on this side, and there's supposed to be another one on this side, and... Yeah, I somehow managed to lose it, I have no idea where it's at, I looked for it for a few hours now. But yeah, this is what I get for working and early in the morning, I guess. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop for now, and yeah, as for this, I'm going to run this without the bearing first, and see how it works. And hopefully it will work, because I don't want to delay this video any further, but I also ordered a replacement from China. Well, I measured the measurements and ordered it, so hopefully it's good enough. I don't think it's the exact same as this one, but yeah, I think it's good enough. So anyway, we will see. I hope it will at least run good enough for me to get a few test prints, so I don't want, so I don't delay this video anymore. But yeah, we will see. And if it ends up delaying the video, then I'm not going to release this video probably, just so I don't release another disappointing video this week. Anyway, we will see. It has been close to three weeks, if not over that, since you saw, since you, I recorded the parts of the video that you saw so far. And ever since that day, for the past three weeks, I've been trying to get this sensor to work. And I finally managed to get it working, and I'll get to that in a second. But before that, I just want to explain what happened and why I didn't get it to work. So, sorry, this is going to be a bit talkative. I don't really have much to show here, so... 
yeah, I'll just put a comment a comment that I explained this thing partially on the screen right now. If I my explanation isn't clear enough, you can read it from there. But so the I'll just get to the thing. Uh, so the initially I suspected that the sensor was way too sensitive to the point where every axis movement triggered it sensor and basically didn't allow me to home it and yeah this assumption is still partially true but what led me to this belief initially was that uh, whenever I read the and stop hit screen on the duet's web interface it was always triggered and no matter what it always it didn't even go down it just went up because it was triggered basically if you trigger a Z sensor that's what happens and yeah there is a in the config.g file where you define the probe there is an invert option that you can add which reverses the reading of the probe and yeah that I tried that which uh, with the assumption that it wasn't triggering uh, it wasn't too sensitive but it was just triggering because it was reversed and yeah that theory was true but unfortunately uh, even if I entered the import code, which was just I1, it didn't import the reading, it was still shown as triggered on the end stop read screen. I still assumed the code was working, it was just reversing the reading on the end stop hit screen on the web interface and went with it anyway. I still tried homing and the exact same happened. And this is what led me to the belief that the sensor was too sensitive. So after that I tried fiddling with its the trim pot on the sensor and that's basically used to adjust the sensitivity of it and yeah I got nowhere basically I also tried reducing the travel speeds on the axis especially when homing also reduced the amperage the current that the motors throw which you can do through software in Duet which is a good which is a really good feature in my opinion otherwise I had to turn the pot on the T TMC2100 drivers that I had back then it was easier this way but still I couldn't get it to work and yeah I tried a whole bunch of other things but I'm not going to get into that because you know I don't want to wait make this bit too long but after trying quite a bit of stuff I finally thought that I should probably update the firmware of the duet I was on version 1.19 which is what the duet shipped with and I didn't even know where to check for updates at the time but I figured it out, it's a github page, I'll link it in the description below in case you have a duet as well. And yeah, I updated to 1.21. There wasn't any fixes for this specific bug in the bug fixes section for either 1.2 or 1.21. So I assumed this wasn't going to work at all, but somehow whenever I inserted the i1 code, it finally started to invert the reading. So I got it to work. I had to deal with a few more settings here and there, but those were my mistakes basically trying to get this thing to work. But anyway, that ended up being the problem. There was a bug in the firmware which caused me to not be able to use this sensor. And this also leads me to believe that the BL Touch would have worked as well if I updated the firmware because I had a similar issue about the reading. But you know, the BL Touch wasn't that reliable anyway. I'm glad I upgraded still and you know this will work way better for my printer and yeah I'm overall happy with it and as I said I finally got this thing to work as you can see on the screen right now it's working and it's measuring properly it also gives me a readout on the screen showing whatever it read which is also nice which is also a nice feature and you know I'm very happy with the way this thing turned out now my plan for this video was to actually get a finally get a test print from this video at least a test cube but unfortunately I'm having a bit of a problem with the extruder right now the extruder motor is turning and you know it's extruding but it's five millimeters I think above the bed which I'm sure I can fix it with that that's not the main concern the actual concern is it's not turning at the speed that I said it at so that could mean a few things, it could be skipping steps, it could be that there is some sort of a speed limitation some set somewhere in the firmware that I need to remove somehow, or I don't know, maybe the the signals that this, my Simplify 3D is generating are wrong. But anyway, it's just basically going through all of these offsettings and trying to figure out whichever one it is, 
and if it's skipping steps and if I can't get it to work by increasing the current I'll, I'll just switch to the older motor but I still think this will work because I seen this work on the older firmware so I'm still thinking this is just a firmware setting somewhere that I need to figure out but you know I had a extremely busy week so I just couldn't get that to work and he, yeah that's basically it but I'm still I don't consider this video still a disappointment because I finally managed to get this sensor to work and what I plan to do in the next video is to finally print the layer fan replacement which I first need to design I also want to get some test prints obviously I should have probably mentioned it first but I can want to get uh, some test prints also I'll probably do this after I print the layer fan but I want to do the comparisons it's been a long time so you might not remember but you know if you think up think at the time where I was just getting rid of the old MKS board and upgrading the duet I mentioned that I wanted to compare them I because of that I did some comparison prints basically a control V torture test and a 3D Benchy and probably a test cube as well initially and yeah I want to compare those two to get an idea between the newer drivers and older drivers and the 32-bit control board versus 8-bit control board etc but yeah that's also coming in the next video probably and yeah that's probably going to be the next video I'm not fully promising what I said so far because I might change my idea and prioritize something else but you know in any case I'll get this thing to work by the next video which I plan to release it next week but you know it really depends on when I actually get this thing working I'll release it as soon as I can because I don't want to delay this project anymore and uh, yeah basically that but you know if I don't get this thing working I'm not going to release it next week or basically I'll not release the next video until I fix everything I get this thing to work however long it, that may take so yeah and that's the plan I also have some future upgrades as you are aware like the MGN 12 rail upgrade I also want to at least replace the print surface if not the entire heat pad but I'll get to that in a later video I also want to upgrade the dual extruders but again I'll get to that in a later video as well whenever I actually decide to do these upgrades obviously I already ordered the MGN 12 rails so those will be my next project I also need to get the octoprint working in between or either get octoprint working or get a different camera system working and yeah, if I decide to not use Octoprint, then I need to get the I need to get the filament sensor wire to the duet, etc. So, yeah, there's still quite a bit to go. So, yeah, I hope you are still excited for those. And yeah, sorry for the delays. Trust me, I'm doing my best. It's just how it ended up being. And yeah, I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about in this video. So. I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, please leave me a like down below, and thanks for watching. And what I plan to do in the next video is to get the layer pen printed properly. Layer pen printed properly. Great. And what I plan to do in the next video is to probably get the layer pen... I did it again.